everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna do more product research for Amazon FBA. If you are thinking about starting your Amazon business, one of the most important things to consider is which product you're going to sell, and that really is going to make all of the difference. I've seen people launch and make $50,000 in their first month, and I've seen people launch and make $50 in their first month, and the biggest difference between who makes it and who doesn't is based largely off of the product that is chosen. And so in today's video, I'm going to kind of talk you through some product research. We're going to practice and do a little bit of that together. And with that, we're going to jump in. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, would love if you could go ahead and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Interact in some way so I know that there's a pulse, honey, that you guys like these videos and I will continue to put them out. I do want to just quickly say in the description of this video, I have a bunch of resources for you guys. So definitely check that out. But there is also a brand new Amazon community. We've been going for about a month strong where you get three classes every month on Amazon FBA. So if you are interested, just wanted to put it out there as another option for those of you who are looking for a little bit more. You like my YouTube videos, but you want something that's a little bit more substantial. The membership is the perfect place for you. Again, that is linked in the description. So with that, let's jump right in. So I thought today we could start with Alibaba instead of doing what we normally do with product research using Helium 10, which is a really powerful Amazon FBA product research tool. It's a, this website right here. I normally use this when I am just trying to think of some inspiration for products and we'll see if we need it, but I do think it will be fun for today for us to just start on Alibaba.com instead, just to switch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna pop over here. If you are interested in trying out Helium 10, it is linked in the description as well with a discount code. But let's just pop over here to Alibaba. And here I am going to go ahead and type something in. Okay, so I I should have cleared this before I brought this up, but y'all are here and we're friends, so I'm just gonna tell you the tea. This product, the Book Nook, is something that I almost sourced. So at the top of the new year, I was in Jamaica, just, you know, solo traveling for the new year. And I came across this product that looked really, really, really promising. The numbers looked insane for Book Nook. I mean, it is an expensive product, but the amount of demand for these Book Nooks through the roof. I'm not sure what it looks like now. It's been about two months since I've looked at this product, but I did decide not to move forward with it simply because a lot of the suppliers themselves were selling on Amazon and they were almost gatekeeping this product. If I'm being honest, I reached out to several suppliers who refused to sell me the product, which is weird. Like, why do you have it listed on Alibaba if you don't plan to sell the product? But they didn't want to sell it to me because they knew that I would become their competition on Amazon. And so I found that really interesting. I've never had an experience like that where the suppliers themselves are hesitant to sell me a product. Like, you know, that is their business. So it's very, very strange. But because it's here already, I feel like, let me just show you what I saw and the potential that I saw when I was first looking into this product. And actually, the way that I got the inspiration for this product in the first place was scrolling on TikTok. There was some, some creator, she had posted just kind of like a relatable TikTok, like I'm 25 and I thought I'd be at the club, you know, having the time of my life, but I'm at home um, making a book nook. So I was like, book nook, that's weird, but it looked very calming and it kind of has that arts and crafts aspect to it, but for adults. And so I just decided, let me just check out this product. Let me see what the numbers look like. And when I was looking on Amazon, the numbers looked phenomenal as far as the metrics. The only thing about this product that makes it not beginner friendly, and so I'm not telling you guys to sell this product. I didn't even sell this product because I couldn't make it make sense, but the product itself is expensive, right? So for a very first product, and if all of this is new to you and you're like, wait a minute, this is too much, you need to go back and watch some of my old videos, some of my you know, basic, basic starter product research videos so that you can have some context. I don't wanna spend this entire video kind of breaking it down because I have so many videos already doing this from you know point A all the way you know to the end. So with this one, I'm just kind of assuming that you have a little bit of an idea of product research and my approach to product research. So basically 
what I recommend when you're looking for products is that you find a product that is $5 or cheaper per unit to sell, or I'm sorry, to purchase. And so with this, as you guys can see right here, we have an option that's $13.50 to $15. We have an option that's $17.50 to $18. We have $9 to $11. I mean, there's different ranges depending on the size of the book nook, the complexity of the book nook, how many pieces there are, all of those factors are going to affect whether or not you're going to be able to get it for, let's call it under $10 or closer to 10 than closer to 20. You know what I mean? Um, so there are different options here, but really what I want to show you and where I'm going to go right now is to amazon.com. And what I want to do is type in book nook and just kind of show you what the numbers are like now compared to what they were before. I am using just the Amazon website. However, I know that you can see all of this extra data and these graphs and weird numbers. All of this is part of Helium 10. So again, if you want to see what I'm seeing, you're going to have to go ahead and try out Helium 10, um, which is once again linked in my description. But either way, what you can do is click on show full summary here and then it will show you all of the numbers here and what it's showing is very very important relevant information for this niche so for a book nook we can see that the 30-day revenue is four hundred and eighteen thousand dollars that's really really solid per seller they're making on average about eighty seven hundred dollars a month in revenue not bad at all it's giving the 30-day units sold almost 10k we've got average bsr or best sellers rank meaning how quickly the product is selling is at seventy two thousand average price i love to see this forty two dollars and it tells you that the minimum price is 19.99 the maximum is 54.99 so for a more simplistic kind of basic book nook it's selling for 20 for maybe the higher end top seller with the most reviews maybe they're up higher at about 55 dollars so it kind of gives you that range and then it just tells you what the average is which is really nice to be able to see this information right off of the bat you don't even have to click on anything to be able to get kind of a lay of the land as far as the niche goes. The average rating is a 4.4, so people tend to like this product, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it means that it's something that people enjoy. But at the same time, when the average rating is high, like 4.5 or above, it's tricky because then you start thinking about how you can improve upon the product, how you can differentiate it, how you can make it better. And if it's already at a 4.5, I mean, how much really can you improve and make the product stand out? So it's a double-edged sword when it comes to the rating. Then we can see um, some other information. We can see that the majority of the sellers are in China. I don't know if this is just a little bit of an error here, but it says 0.96. I think it means 96% from China, 4% Hong Kong, size tier is large standard. It looks like the decimals are just off. I think it's just um, maybe a little error. I'm sure it will be corrected, but yeah, this should say 96%, this should say 4%, this should say 100%, this should say 100%. So for the breakdown further, it kind of gives you which products are doing the best and making the most amount of money, and then it goes down from there so they order it from top to bottom based off of revenue but you can order it from top to bottom based off of whatever you want so i find that pretty useful as well and then from there you start to see the actual listings themselves there's actually an ad right here for this brand Roll life um they are advertising right here so if you keep on scrolling down, then you see more ads, the ones that say sponsored or featured from Amazon brands, those are advertisements. And then we can see where the actual products start. So once you find one that is not sponsored, that is the number one seller because it's organically placed here. They are not at the top of the page because they paid for it. They're at the top of the page because they're selling the most amount of units. And if you don't know, that's how Amazon works. The quicker your product sells, the higher up you are on the first page. So they are definitely the number one seller here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my Helium 10 
Google Chrome extension, when you sign up for Helium 10, you'll get access to the website that has the bulk of the tools, but you also get this shortcut and this extension tool for your Chrome browser specifically. And with that, you can see a bunch more information. So that is what I'm using right here. And I have it for the keyword book nook. So the search volume is 30,000, over 30,000, which is excellent. That's a very healthy search volume. Lots of people want this product. It is high in demand, and that's exactly what we want to see. The total revenue was $418,000. So this is the cumulative amount of money that's being made by all of the sellers on page one. And that is a healthy number as well. We don't want to see like 200K for total revenue. That's too little. But 400K, that's, you know, that's healthy. We like that. Average revenue is 13,000. That's above 10,000. We love to see it. Average price, $42. Love to see it. We don't want to sell anything with an average price under $15. So this is like triple that almost. So we are good there. Average best sellers rank is at 72,000. And then what we really, 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 really love to see the average reviews is under 200, which is kind of where I advise you to stay when you're looking at competition and competition is indicated by the number of reviews. So we can see 133 reviews. That is beautiful. I mean, this is great as far as the numbers go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll over and look at the revenue versus the review count. And normally these columns are not next to each other, but fun fact, you can drag and move around these columns to wherever you want to put them. I just have already been using this tool to or yeah earlier this morning and so i moved it over so it defaulted to that but either way you can drag it over so that you can look more closely and what i always like to do as well is go from top to bottom as far as revenue so we can see that the number one seller is doing fifty eight thousand dollars a month and real quick i'm just going to filter out the ads so hide sponsor I always do that as well. And then we can see what we're working with. So 121 reviews doing $58,000 is not bad at all. And then we can see how it goes down from there. What I will say is at the time that I was looking at this, the numbers were substantially larger, but I'm starting to think that this is definitely a giftable product. And so I think it did have an element of seasonality. So for the holidays, for Christmas, you know, just kind of that cozy vibe and having this activity to do while you're at home and you're relaxing, you're with your family. I do think that it adds a little bit of an element of seasonality. And so I'm not really surprised at that. But what I'm going to do to confirm or rebuke my prediction is clicking on this graph right here search volume again guys if this if i'm moving too quickly that means that you need to watch some of the more basic like very very beginner i know nothing about amazon those level videos and i do have those already existing on my channel this is for those of you who have kind of seen those videos already and you're just kind of practicing with me and following along so Anyway, with that being said, what I just clicked on is this graph right here for search volume, and it shows you how the search volume has fluctuated over time. I'm going to go to all time because what I'm trying to see is if this is a seasonal product or not. And what I can see here is that this was in 2020. There was a really large uptick, and I can only assume that the product went viral somehow, maybe on a big creator's YouTube, maybe on TikTok or something. And then from there, we can kind of see that it has increased in demand over time. So I'm going to look to see if there are spikes specifically in December. And so what I can see here is this is 2020. And there was a bit of a spike. This is a little bit after December. Um, but let's keep on going here to see if we see any trends. So right here. There's a baby spike, nothing dramatic. And then we keep on going. And then we see a little bit of another spike December. I apologize, you guys. My memory card was full and I had to delete videos and whatever, but we're back. I'm not sure exactly where I left off, but I basically was saying that this is a product that has that element of seasonality to it. 
So that would make me nervous about this product for a beginner because you just don't know how to time it correctly and kind of getting things in for a specific time frame is difficult, especially when we're talking about the holiday season and Q4. Shipping can just be a bit unpredictable and so trying to launch this as your first product would not be a safe thing to do. This is definitely for a more seasoned seller to give this a try, but I can also say here that the seasonality is a red flag and then also the cost of the product. Like that is really a deal breaker. That is way too expensive for a first product to be trying to spend $15 per unit. You're going to want to start with 500 and if you do the math, that is a tremendous amount of money for a first product. So I do not recommend that whatsoever. And even though the numbers look really great for this product, even still the numbers look pretty good. I mean, people are still definitely making money with relatively low reviews. It's just not something that is practical for a beginner. So I know we kind of spent a little bit of time on this one, but I kind of wanted to talk you through it because it popped up on my screen and I didn't want to um, ignore it, but here we are. So anyway, let's go back to the homepage here. And what I'm gonna do is start to do a little bit of product research and I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm gonna just see if there's anything interesting. There are lots of different ways that you can search for products on Alibaba. Um, and because I have searched up the book nook, it's giving me things that are kind of related. So it's showing me 3D puzzles, dollhouses, um, like little sculptures, puzzles, things that are similar to what I had already looked up. Now this product here, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna click on it because it looks like it's cheap. Interior decor, metal, maple, gold leaf. That's a bit ambiguous. That's not like a specific product and we wanna sell specific items. Soy wax candle wicks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Amazon and I'm gonna type in candle wicks just because I've never thought to sell just the wicks. People ask me about candles all the time. And normally I say, I wouldn't wanna sell anything flammable or fragile like a candle. However, if this is just the wick of the candle, this isn't really dangerous per se. Okay, it's super cheap and we don't like that. It's, yeah, this is too cheap of a product. It's like five to $10. No, we need something that is more expensive than that. So we're gonna skip over that. Let's see if there's anything else that is interesting here. I'm looking to see garden tiles, artificial grass tiles. Let's see here. This is an interesting product for me because I am redoing not redoing I mean there really wasn't anything there in my backyard but I am having some landscaping work done uh, like a full full build out in the backyard and turf is freaking expensive I had no clue you know like when you become an adult and you realize that rugs are like hundreds if not thousands of dollars and you're like what it's like one of those things when you find out how much fake grass costs um so let me just type in artificial grass tiles and see if it comes up. Ooh, interesting. Okay, there's definitely a few with some pretty high reviews, but then I see a few that are not too expensive either. So I'm gonna pull it up using x-ray and let's just see what the average number of reviews are. Not too bad but the numbers for this are not looking as good because the search volume is low and maybe that's because there's a different keyword we should be using here. It looks like artificial synthetic grass or grass turf, interlocking turf. Those would all be reasonable keywords. The thing is though, I know the second I put in turf, it's gonna bring up so many other results and the reviews are gonna be insane. So just to, and I only know this because I've been doing this for so long and I do product research so often that I can predict a lot of things and I'm just telling you right now, the average reviews for just turf is going to be 
astronomical, but I'll prove it. Let me prove my expertise. <laughs> Here, let's see. Yep, over a thousand average reviews. I knew it. I knew it. And what we're going to do is go from high to low. I'll just make sure that this is all turf. Potty patch. So it's... Okay. For the sake of being as accurate as possible, I'm going to just remove this, even though it is technically turf. It's more for a specific reason, and I want to be as relevant to the keyword as possible. So let me just remove that one. Reviews are still over a thousand. Your girl knows her stuff, I'm telling you. Okay. This is a bigger piece, so I'll, I'll go ahead and leave that. Even if I were to remove it though, it really wouldn't change the numbers that much, but either way, that is what we're looking at. So turf is a no-go. Let's go back to Alibaba and see if there's anything else interesting here that we can look at. Sometimes it makes sense to search by category. Sometimes it makes sense to just browse. I can say right now that it is definitely showing me things that are related to things I have searched in the past. And so not to sell, but I have considered buying these like bounce houses, but kind of like the more modern fancy ones for my son's birthday. So I was thinking maybe it makes more sense for me to buy one than to rent one. Per, per hour, but I'm just gonna keep on going because I already know that that's gonna be really expensive, it's oversized, that's nothing for a beginner to try to play with. So I'm going to just scroll by that, but that's the reason you're seeing so much of that. It's not random, it's because it's kind of what I have looked at in the past. Okay, so it's showing me a lot of the same things. So instead of just looking at what is populating automatically based off of my search history. Let's go to other categories. So we've got home decor, we've got industrial, health and personal care, fashion and beauty, sports and entertainment, tools and home improvement, raw materials. I'm gonna go to health and personal care just because that is something that I happen to know a lot about. The products that I sell on Amazon are health and household products, so this is kind of similar. So I could go to personal care, household cleaning, mother, kids, and toys. Let's see. Yeah, why don't we do mother, kids, and toys? I think that that will give us some cool things to look at. So we don't want anything electronic, but let's see if there's anything interesting here. Oh my gosh, that horrifying Chucky doll. Uh. <laughs> No. Okay, no, they're still showing all the bounce out. Okay, we're gonna have to go to a completely different category. Why don't we do... Mm, why don't we do... Home decor. And let's do home and garden. Okay. Let's see here. Anything interesting? Not exactly. I'm trying to find something that doesn't look like it'll be too competitive, too expensive, too fragile. I like this, but it's expensive. I feel like I've looked at this product before. Um, let me just type it into Amazon and see. It looks like seagrass wall plates. Seagrass wall plate. Mm. I've seen the product before, but maybe I haven't looked it up like I thought. Okay, real quick, let me just look at the niche summary before I pull up X-ray. We can see that the 30 day revenue, oh, only 60K. That's, yikes, that's a big red flag right away. Okay, before I waste my time kind of going down the rabbit hole with this product, let's just see what the, yeah, there's just not enough money here. Total revenue at 60K, that's like nothing. There's just no money to be made, unfortunately. 
Yeah, the number one seller is only doing 15K and they're the top seller. So no, we don't want any parts of this, unfortunately. Let's keep going. Actually, where were we? Oh, over here. Okay. I'm going to see if we can find one promising item. Hmm. What can we find? Mushroom ornaments? Interesting. It says large though, so that concerns me that this would be an oversized product. So maybe we should keep looking because we don't want anything that large. It's going to be more expensive to ship and to process with Amazon. Okay, let's see here. Can we find anything good? Keep scrolling. Hmm. Not so much. Let's see. Some of these items are like cute, but not what we're looking for. Shoe box. Shoe storage box. Let's see. Well, let me just type shoe box and see what comes up. Okay. Nope, the reviews are super high, and I'm not even going to waste our time by clicking it because I can just see right off the bat that the reviews are really, really high, and we don't want to do that. Let's see. Doubles. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of similar products. It's like a lot of vases or vases <laughs> and like trinkets and things that you would like put on your desk. Let me see this product right here. I feel like this would be very saturated on Amazon, but let's just see. Let's just see. I'm very good at predicting these things, but sometimes you just have to remember that you, or I'll speak for myself, that I am not a software. So even if I think I know, I should still put it in here to, to see. Huh. There are some with pretty high reviews, but maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Let's look it up with x-ray. And this will be the last product that we take a look at. Oof. The reviews. Oh, okay, okay. It's because there are some of these bigger brands like Kitchen Spaces and Cuisine Art. Um, let me just go from high to low. This is not a fruit washing. Oh, is it? I think this is one that you shake. So it's not technically a bowl in the way that I was thinking about it, but kind of. Nah, the reviews are too high here. Dang, I, I don't know. I was a little optimistic about that last one. <laughs> But either way, you could spend a lot of time going through all of these. I mean, I was just skimming. I didn't actually spend a lot of time. Ooh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is super cheap. Plastic butterfly. Let me just look this one. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like uh, a dog with a bone or something, whatever that saying is. <laughs> it's like, I just want to find something good. But this is the reality of it. Sometimes when you're doing your product research, you don't always find something good. That's the whole point of doing product research and practicing. Um, so I want to be realistic, but also I want to find something good. 
Okay. The reviews are probably going to be a bit high, but let's see. Whew. Not just a bit high. Very, very high. Wow. This brand is absolutely slaying. Like, I didn't want to say slaying, but I don't want YouTube to be mad at me for the word I was going to say. This is such a cheap product. It's only $6. And okay, this one's $7. But either way, look at their revenue. Almost $400,000 from just this one color of these butterflies, the pink and blue ones. It's very pretty. I mean, the, the colors are nice. But can you imagine making 400k selling plastic butterflies on Amazon? It's just mind blowing. For this other colorway that they have here, it's kind of like a pastel rainbow color, $333,000 a month. This other color, the gold, 294k. It's just nuts, like the amount of money that can be made selling a product so simplistic like this one. That is absolutely insane, and I wish this was my brand. <laughs> Then they've got another brand here who's kind of using a similar strategy where they've got separate listings with different colors. They're not doing as well, but I mean, they're still doing pretty decent. I mean, it's definitely enough to live off of. So they're doing pretty well also. But no, this is definitely too competitive of a product for us, but you know, it is what it is. This would be kind of a cool niche to go down. I'm just gonna click on the top seller. And I'm going to go to their store. I'm just curious if they sell anything outside of fake butterflies or if this is like literally their entire niche. Okay, so they sell holiday products and special event products. So all different types of decorations. Okay, they've got large butterflies. Okay, I understand this brand now. They do just like event decor. Here's their new arrivals. Their storefront is, you know, pretty solid. You can understand what they try to sell, who they're catering to, who their customer is. It's a pretty cohesive brand. They don't have any random thing in here. They're not selling like decorative butterflies and then trying to sell, you know, like a beauty product. So that wouldn't make any sense for their brand. So yeah, they're, they're doing well. I probably would, if I wasn't conscious of the time, spend some time going down this rabbit hole because if people like 3d butterflies what else do they like that's 3d you know it could be like a 3d heart 3d heart not stickers i don't know what i would call those yeah like 3d heart decals i don't know what the keyword would be but you know similar to the butterflies maybe it's not butterflies but like 3D stars, you know? This is how you have to think when you're going down the rabbit hole is like, what is similar but not the same thing? Because what I'm looking at is too competitive, but what can I sell that could have some potential that is similar? Hold on, let's, okay. I know I keep saying that this like our last thing that we're looking at, this will really be our last thing, but I just get so, oof, invested. We're gonna go top to bottom. Even though this is not the product that somehow found its way into our search results, leave us alone. Okay, not as promising as I thought. Yeah, I gotta hang it up. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed practicing a little bit with our product research using Alibaba as our jumping off point. Regardless of where you start off, whether you find inspo from TikTok, Instagram, any social media, your real life, Helium 10, wherever you're starting off from, make sure that you continue to do the research, look at the numbers, see what the market is like, see if there are ways that you can differentiate the product, figure out, is it a seasonal product? Can I make money selling this year round? Is it cheaper than $5? You know, you're kind of going through that checklist so that you can narrow things down and pick a product that is going to be profitable and bring you in the type of money that you deserve. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and close out this video. It's been great and I'll see you guys in the next one.